welcome and thank you for joining me for this new moon in Scorpio video and in this video we are going to be looking at the chart for the Scorpio new moon and then we'll be going over the symbols associated with this lunar cycle so to start off with this is a harmonious chart there are a couple of disharmonious elements that are significant but for the most part there are more positive aspects to this chart than there are negative aspects. So to start off with, our new moon here is at 20 degrees of Scorpio. 20 breaks down to 2, which is the number for duality, for choices. And with the sun and the moon both at 20 degrees in Scorpio, we are facing a major decision point in this cycle of our lives. As a species, it seems as though we are seeing this major decision point occurring. And Scorpio is a very powerful sign. It's probably, out of all the signs in the zodiac, the most interesting because there's three symbols for Scorpio. There is the scorpion, which crawls along and stings things, and that's when you're in your lower nature, when you're working with the scorpionic energy. And there's the eagle, which rises above, which has the foresight, the knowledge, which is closer to spirit. And then there's the phoenix, which is the energy of the rebirth that many spiritual practices um, talk about. So this is a very powerful sign. And it seems as though for this particular full new moon, I almost said full moon, sorry, this particular new moon, we have this energy of the dark night of the soul happening. Now, the sun and the moon are not alone in Scorpio. They are accompanied in conjunct Mars, which is at 22 degrees. 22 breaks down to four, which is the number for reliability. And so this has to do with the core of who we are, the foundation of our being, and the foundation of our species. This dark night of the soul is really shaking everybody to the core. Now, on the opposite side, opposing this, Stellium and Scorpio, we have Taurus, or Uranus and Taurus at 21 degrees. 21 breaks down to 3, which is the number for growth. And Uranus is basically disrupting things when it comes to the Taurus energy, and the Taurus energy is finances, earthly uh, matters. It could be when it comes to food, that sort of thing. Anything that has to do with resources. So right now there's a great disturbance when it comes to resources, when it involves this, involving this new, or new moon. So basically we have this energy of a dark night of a soul that has to do with a major choice, that has to do with the foundation of our beings. And what's really affecting this is this disturbance in resources, which is the Uranus and Taurus. Now, the planet that's the busiest in this chart by far is Mercury, which is here in Sagittarius at four degrees. Again, four, we have this reliability thing. Our mind is centered on our reliability, on the foundation of who we are. It's really concerned about what we are at the core of ourselves, the core of our beings, how we define ourselves. And Mercury is sextiling Venus and Libra. Now Venus and Libra, our heart is focused on justice and a fair outcome here. And so it is also being squared by Saturn, which is at zero degrees of Pisces. Now zero means that it's just pure potential. And when any planet is at zero degrees, it's making the biggest waves. So it's making a huge, huge wave in the collective conscious right now, which is Pisces. And Saturn is basically sitting here constricting information, constricting knowledge. It's controlling the narrative right now, right in this chart. Saturn is constricting and controlling any narrative that's coming out of Pisces, out of the collective consciousness. It's saying there's only one right way to say things and only one way to see things. And you can definitely see that in the collective and this collective choice point. Now, there is also a Neptune trying to the stellium in uh, Scorpio. And so this Neptune trine is basically supporting this energy that's supportive of the Mars willpower, um, consciousness and subconsciousness, experiencing this dark night of the soul. 
and Neptune is loving it. Now Neptune's the media, so the media is having a field day with this energy. Now the stagnant energy of the outer planets is lightning since Saturn is now direct and Pluto and Uranus are no longer in a trine. However, Neptune is sextiling both Pluto and Uranus still. And so it's acting like a sort of glue. So the group think is causing disruption and bringing endings. Now, I didn't draw it on here, but Eris is at 24 degrees of Aries. I looked up in Ephemeris to see where she's at. I thought she was at 25 degrees. So she is still conjunct the North Node. The North Node has just barely started its journey with Eris. So this energy of the underdog, of the people who were neglected, the people who were left out, is going to continue all the way through the beginning of December. But it hasn't hit its apex point yet. It is still um, building up to that point, which will be, I believe, November 27th. So we are still coming to the strongest point of Eris driving the North Node. So we really have... Eris, the goddess of chaos and strife, driving the car, as it were, of this reality. Now, for the first of our symbols, we have first freeze moon. This is the second in the direction of the west and the water. And this is the first breath of winter. This is the time of the last, technically third, harvest. There is activity to prepare for the winter as the trees become bare. This is a time of mastery. So in our lives, this would align with the middle-aged years when we've already accomplished things. We have children. We have things already. And so this really tells you the direction that we are going in for the year. We've accomplished all that we can, and now it's in the hands of the fates. It's in the hands of, of the spirit to manifest into its final form. And for our Hebrew letter for this lunar cycle is Nun. This is assigned the number 50, which brings to, down to change. And Nun is the Hebrew letter associated with faith. Nun is the Aramaic word for fish. Both the word for prophecy and prophet start with none. None also opens and closes the words for melody. So none is a very powerful word. Again, it's associated with the prophets and prophecy. And boy, is prophets and prophecy currently in the news this recently. I've heard a lot about prophets and prophecy. Now our tarot card for this new moon is number 13, the death card. You can see there's a little comet up there. We're trying to get we'll back this up a little bit so we can see the comet. And here we have an interesting scene. A lot of people become scared looking at the death card. 13 is the number of completion, but it has a lot of fear around it too. The death card is actually a card of rebirth. Some say that when we die to the flesh, we are born to spirit. In the tarot card created by Paul Fuster Case, we see the king and queen's head buried. Nun, Lauderhand explains, represents sprout and symbolizes future abundance. The old conscious and subconscious have begun being transmuted so they can be transformed into the birth of the superconscious. And this is very much the process of Scorpio. Scorpio, again, is associated with the phoenix. And so the subconscious here is the feminine's head and the conscious being the masculine's head. And those two being buried as they are represents basically a um, journey towards the rebirth of that being. You could relate this symbolism to alchemy and the skeleton would be the salt, the subconscious would be spirit, and the conscious would be mercury. And so it's the mercury and the um, mercury and sulfur are the ones that are being transmuted here and transformed. And of course that gives rise to what happens later, which is the alchemical child, which is, shows up in the judgment card in the tarot. So right now we're going into this transformative process. This is a process of transformation. Now for our oracle card, I pulled the loam, number 30. 30 breaks down to three, again growth, just like where Uranus is in the chart. We have this energy about growth. 
and what the loam suggests, she looks a bit forlorn and wistful looking out into the distance. And she's sitting on this really wise old tree stump head. And she's thinking about perhaps all of her faults and frailties. But the answer to this card, the advice that is brought with it, is to give unconditional, unconditionally, and to give unconditional love to people, to do random acts of kindness, to remember to be kind to yourself as well. So this is definitely a period of time to, even though it seems though we are going through a collective dark night of the soul, is a time to really get into our practice of who we are as spiritual beings on a spiritual path of the seeker. We are ever more aligning ourselves with love, which is the ultimate source of creation. We were created from love and we will return to love when we are ready to. And so this is a time period to really embody that love, to give unconditionally to others, to bring that love into the reality of others by doing random acts of kindness, by opening the door for people who don't expect it, for, you know, any number of things, listening to some old man tell his stories about when he was a younger child. Things like that are priceless, but often taken for granted. And right now, as humanity faces this dark night of soul in Scorpio, with all the things that are happening in this world, it's a beautiful thing to focus on that and really create that in our day-to-day -day lives. So that's what I have for you for this Scorpio new moon. It really comes down to a choice point, a choice. Do you give in to love or do you give in to fear? Which do you choose, fear or love? Love embraces all. It does not judge. Love is very faithful. It is very kind. But most of all, it does not judge. And so as we go forward, even though on an individual level we may feel helpless seeing tragedies in the world and suffering in the world, we can make a difference by making choices in our day-to-day -day life, of being kind to others, of loving others. That's really what the loam represents, and that is the advice of this transformative time. It is a time to either sting like the scorpion or rise like the phoenix, and I hope that you choose to rise like the phoenix above all of this. Bye for now.